Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good night everyone. So we are continue for our class business research method and previous class we have then cover sounds like introductions, uh, initials, what should PhD and master thesis and uh, to do uh, and to get to get the positive vibes in order to write your thesis and complete your study. Okay. So you can refer the video previously and through our WhatsApp group. Okay, we are continuing straight away today uh, about uh, I'm try I'm try at least to cover it on chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three for this semester. Okay, so we can start from beginning. So from my slide, we can start today on topic. Title first. Uh, we can start with title. Then we are continue for the outline for chapter one. Okay. This is your thesis title. The most important, the most important is, is actually based on your communication with your supervisor. Your title should be simple and clear. And your supervisor understand what is your research. So your title can be represent as your contents on your research. That's the most important. Okay. So that's why. So you ask master ones for PhD and master. You need to have some com good communication with your supervisor uh, in order to confirm and make some discussion with your supervisor. Maybe your supervisor can give some input and improvement towards your title suggestions. That's the most important. Towards our assignment also. So uh, the major part is actually how that you show your progress in your thesis. Yes, I know yet. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yes, I know you are actually, most of you is master one, but this is a requirement in, in order to complete in this subject, you should be submit your research proposal. And already mentioned with the first class that uh, I'm not, uh, particular to check number of page, a page number, but I I want to see your efforts based on your progress, and it's not just complete, but I need you need to write something for your chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Just submit based your progress, chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three. Okay. Based on your title, and from this slide, I already highlight. First is concise. Clear, accurate, interesting, and relevant. Okay, let's say your title is interesting. It's not enough. Because you do a research. When you do a research, your title should be clear and accurate to represent to represent your, your content. Okay. To the content and the field of the study. That another another keyword is field of study. So we have some case. We have some case. It's not many lah, but we have case. Um, students, they 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 what we call that. Uh, the program. I'm not sure that exactly program. Let's say the program is, uh, HRM or HRD, Human Resource Management or Human Resource Development. So they actually take PhD in Human Resource Management. Okay, during the viva and during the viva. When we check reference list, when we check the reference list, we cannot see any journal from HR because you are registered in PhD HRM. So we need to check your reference. So hopefully 80% your reference should be in the field of HRM. But your, your reference, most of your reference is actually education reference. So from the Viva, uh, as the panel also, uh, we make a decision. Uh, we cannot be uh, except for PhD HRM. What we change your programs, you can get the PhD but not in HRM. But we are suggest education management. So you graduate as a PhD education management, not HR. So that's most important. That's why uh, I hope that you see that. Um, uh, you try to go to any courses, you need to learn how to get good thesis 
and good article journals. Because from your writing, from your citation, we're looking uh, from your reference, how good your reference in terms of prominent authors, according to your years, how that uh, from your sentence and facts is actually matched and accurate, not just only your site and site on your site, but the, the choosing of the fact as author is not related from our research discussion. That's the most important, okay? Don't worry about the final one, okay? Your, your title, uh, this is your final title, can be recognized until you have complete in everything, which is you have go to the vivam and then uh, make a, some correction, minor or major. So uh, we have some special meeting to endorse your title. But some have case, your title little bit, we, we change in order to fulfill the requirement for, for graduations. So uh, please uh, don't take serious on your final title because during your colloquium, we maybe need to change your titles. Go to the proposal defense. Maybe some of the panel suggest to change your title. Go to the pre -viva. We call here pre -viva. Also, we call that present data analysis. Also, you need to little bit change your title. Then go to the viva. Also, change. After do a summer correction. Also, we have the special meeting. Also, uh, we we add or we drop some words in order to to fulfill the requirement. So, so we are the student. Please don't take too much time to think what what the best title from my thesis for right why right, right now you just make your title that's actually your supervisor agree with your title you we can move from the from the writing and yeah, from the section uh, we go to chapter by chapter section by section by by follow this title just that's enough okay that that i try to highlight here so yes, everyone need have title right now. So you need to discuss with supervisor, but don't don't take much time to always think what the best title in my thesis. Okay, because we have many uh process and in future, so we need to go through the process. Maybe the panel will be suggest another title to match your 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 your, your thesis. Okay. Right, we go to the 1.1. .1. Okay, basically, uh, in our uh, UPSI, eh, UPSI, you need to go to our website, uh, postgraduate uh, IPS website. From IPS website, we can download, we can download our, I, our thesis guideline. And for PhD and for the master student, we have the thesis guideline. So everyone should be download this guideline because in order to complete your thesis writing, we need to follow our format. Especially chapter one. Especially chapter one. So we need to follow what exactly have uh, done uh, through the suggestions from the guideline. We need to follow the IPS guideline in order to, to make sure that your thesis are completed and follow the IPS format. Uh, that that I try to highlight again. So I think last time also I I I, re, I remind about make sure that all the students already download the the thesis card line. Okay. Uh, this is some suggestion. Um, yes, maybe I call that maybe after you have discussed with your supervisor, maybe your supervisor have some some opinion and idea. What's the what's the direction? in your thesis writing okay how to write 1.1 introduction maybe your supervisor uh, suggests you need to write more and more meaning that not enough one paragraph maybe two three paragraph maybe two or three page okay that is very subjective that's why you need to communicate with your supervisor but for me, the most important for 1.1 in your thesis is about chapter 1 introduction. For me, just enough one paragraph. Short paragraph. One paragraph only enough. 
how to write. So this is an example. I'm right. This chapter will discuss the research background, problem statements, research objective, research question, research hypothesis, research significance, operational definitions, scope of sorry, scope and limitations, and end with the conclusion. Sorry, here is not scope of limitation. This actually um scope and scope is not of scope and limitation and last one is the our chapter conclusion and that's all for me if you can write like this one very short paragraph to explain the outline or content for your chapter one just enough okay as to, after you have done everything in chapter one the last section is 1.10, for example. And 1.10 is your conclusion. So 1.10 is conclusion. So how to write the conclusion? So because we have done ready for chapter 1, we finished to write 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9. The last one is 1.10. I just to make a summarize, this chapter has, I changed, in introduction, because we not yet, that's so that's why we use a word will. Now we have done, that's why we have already discussed the research background and problem statement, research objective, research question, research hypothesis, research important, operational definition, and scope of limitation. The next chapter will discuss the literature review chapter. Okay, that's we call that some format. So this is this is something like initial thing you should be understand. Okay. So we have five chapters and all chapter we have five. Okay, chapter one, introduction. Chapter two is your literature review. Chapter three is your research methodology. Chapter four is your analyze and finding. Chapter five is your discussion and conclusion. Okay, so I believe part of the introduction, 1.1 is introduction for chapter one. 2.1 is introduction for chapter two. 3.1 is actually introduction for chapter 3. 4.1 is introduction to chapter 4. 5.1 is introduction for chapter 5. So please write is actually introduction of specific chapter. So 1.1, one paragraph only. And 2.1, also one paragraph. 3.1, 4.1, 5.1, also one paragraph. Why you should be, can write in one paragraph? Because I can I can highlight what's the outline from this chapter, what's the content that we can we will be discussed about this chapter. Just enough. Okay, but I repeat again, somehow your supervisor suggests you need to write more. So this we call that the subjective from your supervisor. Maybe they have some different perspective and idea it's okay never mind so the most the final one is actually based with with your discussion and from your supervisor decisions how to how to suit and make sure that this is the right way in order to write 1.1 but for me i just suggest what's the important thing you should do and you can start from your writing just enough for one paragraph okay and then you have done for uh, for certain chapter. Okay, let's say chapter one, you have done everything 1.1 to 1.9. So 1.10 is your conclusion. So again, same. You can copy from the introduction. Just change will to has. Okay, next. The last, you, you can see the last sentence. Okay, in chapter one, I write the next chapter, we we'll discuss the literature review chapter. Okay, we go to the chapter two. I, I will be changed. The next chapter will discuss the research methodology. So we go to the chapter three, and the last sentence I will be right. The next chapter we discuss the, the sorry. The next chapter will discuss about analysis and finding, and then chapter four. The next chapter will discuss the discussion and conclusion. So this is we call that formatting. So don't worry about this one. Okay, so now you, you get some idea. We receive some idea how, how to start chapter one 
we can write 1.1 and 1.10. How to write chapter 2? So you get some idea to write 2.1 and 2.10. Also same in chapter 3, 3.1, 3.10. Chapter 4, 4.1, 4.10. And chapter 5, 1, uh, 5 .1 and maybe 5.5. .5. Okay, the, 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 the final one, eh, just to make it a general, eh, maybe your, your literature review, you cover too much. Maybe your 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 literature review is not just 2.10, maybe you 2.20. Maybe your chapter 3 is not 3.10, maybe 3.12. But I'm just pick up the number of 10 is something and make it a generalized. Okay? But it's actually it depends on your topic with, with the decision from, from your supervisor. So I'm your lecturer in business research method. Try to uh, explain what should you write in your thesis from the section and section from your 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 thesis online. So we try to complete from, uh, sorry, we try to complete chapter one first. Okay, so after we are done, we, we go to the chapter two and chapter three. But in our class, uh, we are more focused later on on the chapter three. But for me, it's not good when I directly start for chapter three for research methodology. So that's why, uh, from the beginning class, okay, we, we start from the sounds like direction and motivation. So today we go to the chapter one. So next we go to the chapter two, the following week that we can start with the research methodology. And so don't worry, our our major and portion, the, the big portion is discussed about the research methodology. But for me, I need to start with the introduction and literature review also. Okay, if you have some idea, some comment or some question, you can write in the chat uh, area so you can you can ask no problem any any question you can ask and if, if you are from the local student you want to ask in Malaysia, Malaysia also no problem and so the international student please write any question whatever that you want to ask i try to give some some feedback okay okay now we go to the 1.2 uh, 1.2 we call that research background Okay, one point two is your research background. The 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 I'm I need to start with this, this understanding definitions. What is what is a research background? Okay, the simple words, research background is relevant issues. What is your research issue? Why you choose the topic? What the issues? What the issues? Okay, that's please remember this meaning, this definition of research background. What is a research background? It's actually research issue or relevant issues. And based on your title, because now you only have title. So 1.1, just write the outline for the chapter one. So everything. We need to start from research background is 1.2. So how to write research background? Now we only have title. So from your title, what the issues? What the research issues? What the relevant issues? So that's the most important research background. Please focus. Whatever you write in your research background is actually relevant issues based on your topic. Okay? All right. But please remember, you are actually a researcher. Okay, the issue you should be highlight is should be um, suitable for researcher because some other issue is not suitable for the researcher. I give you some another explain explanation. So in one company, in one company, so we have many departments. We have HR department, finance and account department. Uh, we have legal and law department. You have marketing department, supply chain and production department. So what else? So so many and many department. Also, and that the special department is R and D department. So now, if you register PhD and master, we work like R and D department. So every department, so marketing have the problem need, need to be solved. Okay, HR, we have the some issue and problem need to solve. And R&D department, 
also have specific issue and problem need to be solved. Okay, that I'm trying to highlight you is actually now we are researcher. What thing researcher can do? What problem are most suitable can be the best solution if based on R&D? Or this problem, uh, how to solve? We need to go to the research. We need to do a research. R&D can do this. So you ha we have the problem. We have the issue. How to solve? Who's the, who's the best candidate can be solved? R&D. So we, we are actually work in the R&D. So we are actually researcher. That you need to think, sorry, you need to, to what we call that. Um, please remember lah. So now you are actually researcher. Uh, you actually researcher. Okay. So that is some of the, uh, what you call that, um, some, some important thing. Eh? You should, should be uh, remember and understand what is research, uh, research background. Okay. Number one is explore the broad idea uh, foundation. Okay, from 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 let's say lah, I'm I'm your supervisor and your examiner, so from your research background, of course, because we 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 start your thesis from from research background. So from your writing, we get oh this student try to explore. Okay, so this topic or oh, they try to highlight some some good idea. So we think also we agree. So. This idea are suitable for for research. Okay, uh, what the relevance or critical issues that lead the proposed research? Because the most important thing when when you write sentence by sentence, paragraph and paragraph in your research background, little bit little bit you try to give some some issue that this issue are more critical, are more important. And in order to solve this issue, we need research. We need research. That, 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 that thing you should be highlight in your research background. Identify the relevant issues. Is it okay for the beginning, okay, when you try to start the research backgrounds for the first round, don't, don't, don't to be perfect don't take too much serious whatever you think that this is good issues you just write because after three once you complete chapter one you we can go for the chapter two so during during your writing in literature review you can also uh, improve your chapter one the reason is during chapter one maybe the numbers of article journal Maybe less, less 20 or less 30 or 40 article journal only. But during in chapter 2 in literature review, maybe you write already 200, 400 article journals. So you are meaningful, your understanding about this topic, about previous research are, are much better compared during in chapter 1 writing. So when you write in chapter 2, Oh, you, you think that this is a really good issue. You need to improve again your research background. Because in chapter one, you should be take serious. Huh? This one take serious. Because chapter one, this is a chapter one. Why, why you choose these prominent authors? Why your citation is quite old? Because whatever you cite in chapter one, this is the best one. If if you ask me regarding chapter one, two, three, four, five, towards citation, for example, you cite according to Abu Ali 2024, Siti 2023, Hashim 2024, whatever you write citation in chapter one, these all authors are important. And the, the best one authors that can be represent your idea because chapter one is idea to represent your idea towards why we need to do a research okay so time to time you need to improve chapter one so that's why for the initial stage don't don't think that uh, this is okay this is right uh it may be wrong don't 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 take uh too much 
you think too much about this is right, this is wrong. You need to at least write and write. So my formula is actually to the postgraduate student is at least all student postgraduate, PhD and master, you need to write at least one day, one paragraph. No excuse. No excuse. You need to write one day, one paragraph. This is a this is a good process. Once you write today in one paragraph, and next day, I think you write also one paragraph, but much better compared with today. Uh, so keep practice, keep practice every day. So I believe around th three months, you you write per day, okay? So 90 days, uh, three months, I think that you have, you ha you can get the good skills in order to write one paragraph. It's not easy. You just one, two day, you write one paragraph, you have master, uh, you have good skill uh, in terms of academic writing. You need to write every day and uh, two, three months, at least in three months, I think that you are consistent, right? Day, day, day to day. So uh, this is a, this is a very, very good uh, approach uh, to the student to show that you are consistent with with your your thesis writing. That that is that this is some my suggestion lah to the postgraduate student because uh we are not evaluate from your experience. We we are not evaluate from your knowledge, but we are evaluate from your thesis writing. So PhD we are evaluate based on your thesis writing. So that's why we need. We need your 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 progress writing. So from your progress writing, we, we can know that these are actually okay, suitable or not. Okay? That's why you need to keep practice in terms of your academic writing and day-to-day. -day. Okay. Next, uh, number two is identify the relevant issues. Okay? Because you need to more focus. Okay, now we are not degree student. We are not master student. Let's say if you have previously take the what we call that um master by project something like that. Now we do a research. Now we do a research. When you do a research, you go to this very very specific topic. Okay, so let's say uh inshallah, and you you can complete your thesis. Your program is the financial services. Let's say the like financial management. So you get. Uh, PhD in financial management. So some outside there call you, you are expert in the financial management. And how 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 we can receive we are expert in financial management? Because we my our research only specific one. So when we talk about the financial management, so many areas, so many things covered under financial management. But you are okay and master on specific area. This area are based on your title only. Okay, that's why uh, you you cannot be uh, you are program financial management. All the issue financial management should be right in your research background. This is wrong. The relevant issues is based on your topic. Some students, uh, yeah, they think that it's good before because we need to start something like broad. Okay, we need to explain what is the financial management. But no, in chapter one, the the most serious is you just straightforward what actually you want to highlight in your research background. What the issues? This is not the issues. So from my experience, when I read your research backgrounds, so I just say that, okay, please delete this paragraph. Check page three, four, delete. Page this one, delete. This is not issues. This is not the relevant issues. Why you write this paragraph? I think that I suggest to remove. Remove this paragraph. Remove the page. Because you are, this is not the relevant issues. You just highlight sound like history. Research background is not history. Research background is not introduction, sorry, definition. Some some students write many and many definitions in research background. So research background is not definitions. Research background is not just somehow that you explain about the background, 
the history of the companies, the history of based on your specific topic, discuss too much about the theory. No, this is not literature review. Now you write is actually research background. What we need actually, what is your research issue? What's the relevant issues? Okay. Point number three is discussing. Name several relevant issues and the focus of past study in the field of study and the explain each critical issue. What 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 the most important you need to understand before you write your research background. Our supervisor and our examiner, they have some expectation. For example, expectation is what's new, what's other news about this topic? What's the important fact from your topic? What's the what the current situation? What the current setting? Okay, that, that, that's our expectation. Student, right? The issues. What the issue right now? What the current current setting right now? So okay. that our supervisor yeah. and assessor expect. Okay, sorry, I I I I need to mute. Eh? Okay, so that you need to understand. In order to write thesis, it's not just only you write and write, you write. But somehow you need to understand and what is actually your supervisor needs and your examiner. What is actually examiner looking and towards your, your research background. So th this is not issue. Yeah, you, you say this is issue, but this is not current issues. What you try to explain in your research background. So definition is not the issues. Historical is not the issues. So we need some issues. Why you choose this topic as your research? Why research is the best solution in order to, to highlight these issues? That's that the most important. Lah. And if you are from industry, I, I believe uh, when, when, when you go to the UPC and because we have many international students, I believe you are actually have very good experience in the industry. And you have very, very experience in industry when we have something to discuss or you have meeting, the first thing first, you need to highlight. So, guys, have any issues? Go. Oh, so, this person highlight, oh, now situation, we have the issue A. So, other, other person also highlight issue B, issue C, issue D. And as the chair meeting, okay, very good. So very good participation involved towards to highlight issues for the our company. Okay. So based on based on this all issues, what's the problems? So the second question is the problem in our thesis is the problem statement. After you write the research background, research background is your uh, research issues. Now next we talk about the problem statement. Same like industry. After you give more and more issues. Suddenly, we need to conclude. In order to conclude the issue, the best term is what's the problems? So we need to have some statement uh, to highlight that all this issue is actually, this is the sentence of the problem. This is the problem definition, problem statements. Okay, from the industry perspective, you have issue. So we conclude the problem. So we need to have some Industry somehow they use the word countermeasure solution. Somehow maybe you use objective. Okay, from this problem we need to countermeasure. From from thesis after problem statement is the objective. What's meaning the objective? Objective is actually what's the objective in order to solve the problem. Uh, so that's why if you are from industry you are easy to understand what the research background. Research background is actually issues. After you have the issues, now you think to write your problem. After you have know your problem, so what's the how to solve your problem? What the solution? In this case, solution is actually your research objective. Uh, same actually. So don't worry to to to, to take difficulties. Uh, how to understand research background? 
It's simple, brother, sister. Research background is the issues. So if you work the industry, we need to identify issue first. Then you can conclude what's the problem from this all this issue. So what's the problem? So from your problem, how to stop the problem? Uh, this actually very simple to understand. Why we need research background? This is actually issue. From this issue, you can know that what's the problem of research. From this problem to research, how to solve all this problem of research? You need to put the specific one. What's your objective number one? Object. Let's say you have three problems. So problem number one can be solved by objective number one. Problem number two can be solved by your research objective number two. Problem statement number three, you can solve by research objective number three. Okay, uh, from, from this, this side, okay, you, you know that oh, all the problem already solved by research objective. This clear problem statement, very accurate and specific problem statement because you consider the all issue you highlight in research background. Uh, so we check and balance. We check and balance or oh, this statement of the problem already fulfill the all issue have discussed in the research background. Okay, uh, so... We call it in 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 in, in chapter one. We call this is actually alignment for research background, problem statement, and objective. If you not clear in this section, okay, uh, during your proposal defense or your viva, maybe you are not pass. Some of student is not pass the proposal defense, or you receive the major correction during the viva because your problem and your objective is not aligned your research background and your problem statement is not aligned. Okay, so we we just only start your thesis 1.2 is research background, but if you fail how to write research background to align the problem statement and objective, you cannot pass the proposal defense and then during the viva, you may be facing the major correction. Uh, so just, just in the first step, you need to understand what is a research background. Okay. Okay, next, this is some another explanations about the research background to 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 make sure everyone here are uh, much clear what's the meaning, what should we do, what should we write in the research background that whatever we write in paragraph can be accepting with your supervisor. Okay, I, I, I pick up some of the, what we call that, the purple one, okay, uh, the purple highlight. What is the current status? As a researcher, yes, I know you want to do a research, but in the research world, okay, from the previous researcher, what they have done towards this topic. I believe this topic, you are not the only one. Too many researcher in the in the worldwide, and not just only from your country. It's not just only from Malaysia. So it's a worldwide. I believe we have many researcher have covered this topic. So what the current researcher do towards this topic? Uh, so if you not discuss your research background, so your research background is not enough, because your research background not highlight. What happened in the currently? Um, okay. Number two is the what is the scope and general boundaries of the research conducted. So from your topic, okay, from your topic. So in your, okay, sorry, I repeat again. From your topic and your thesis is actually you need to cover in which area. Because the, the, the another important thing in, in research background you you actually this thesis is covered in which area so somehow that when we read your research background we still lost okay uh from your topic you you actually you, from your study you you area in in which which part and so because in this paragraph you explain about a next you go to b next go to c and d suddenly after we have done read your research background we still confusing which area you want to be more focused? Uh, because that I already mentioned uh, about thesis, we need to more specific. And we need to more specific. Okay. 
So don't wait until research objective. That objective should be specific. But for the first time, we just know your specific area only in your research objective. But the most important, we can know already in your research background. Uh, okay, from your research background, that, that we are noticed that, okay, this person uh, try to zoom or uh, love to, to study on this area. So you already highlight that what already a previous researcher do in this topic. Uh, what what's what's the what's the, the 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 beauty and important thing you can continue and you can be extend uh, and right what situations make research in this are important and why why from from your writing in your research background as the researcher we can conclude that okay very nice uh idea so yeah this this idea can be can be done through the the research okay we we know that the situation we can we can we can solve and the first step is actually do a research this this part is good okay so yeah if you want to do a research uh, uh, so we agree so because you you can deep you can be explore eh? you can you can measure you can analyze you can get the data so if 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 the issue is sound like sound like can be extend to the explore can be extend to to get to need to read more and more which is you need to get more document more data more article journal so you need to read and review so from that you need to come up your instrument it sounds like when you're right examining and supervisor can be think that oh this is a this is a very good idea because this idea can be processed can be a can be a research processes uh that that the thing that always it's not just only you as supervisor and as examiner when they read your thesis they always to start to think what actually the student try to to do in your research that so this statement this paragraph can be good one to prove why this issue can be uh, a research or how that this issue the relevant issue that matching with your research okay so we are always us and when when we read we start we also think that this is okay this is good uh, and we, we need to review and check okay does the research research develop in the field of study it sounds like sounds like conclusion lah. from your research background from your idea, from your research background, from your issue you highlight in your research background, so we can conclude that yes, research we need a research. How that research are important step or, or initial step in order to to get the solutions. Uh, okay, is there information such as recent statistical? Okay, if you have some trend. Some statistic can be support and proof to confirm that why these issue are important. You support by statistic is okay. Ah, uh, so sound like graph, uh, table, statistic. You can show that in your research background. Okay, some students are confused. Confused. This data, this statistic trend also. We should be highlight in the introduction or the problem statement. Okay, this is my my opinion. And uh, if you want to show the statistic table or figure, should be right in your research background, because problem statement is not just about a complex or analytical section. Problem statement is you need to use very simple words. Very simple words to, to explain what is your problem statement. If you put the all graph, table and figure in problem statement, you need to interpret. So, problem statement is actually, this section is not to interpret table or figure. But from research background, table and figure, statistic and trend, we can conclude in the simple words and sentence to highlight 
from from literacy background you show the all the table figure you write one sentence to represent what is the uh, the conclude from the table and figure uh, so somehow that the student think that oh if you have statistic trend you can put in your problem statement no that's why we i highlight uh, most of the comment in the problem statement is a problem statement unclear because you put many things in your problem statement, so suddenly we we not know that what is your main problem statement. So you should be know that whatever you write in the problem statement, you need to be solved. Uh, from your understanding, whatever you write, because you want to be sure that uh, I have write a few paragraph, at least to to show that this is my problem statement. Some student think on that. But the uh, the evaluation the examiner will be read sentence by sentence. Then finally, the examiner will ask you how many problem statements from your problem statement section. How many problem statement you highlight? Okay, maybe you 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 conclude that only have three. Why? When I read sentence by sentence, I notice you have twenty problem. Ah, so that's why problem statement not write too much, because all sentence you write in your problem statement, this is the problem of your research. In order to complete your thesis, you need to be solved. You need to be solved all your problem statement. So that's why, don't don't think that if you write more and more problem statement is good. For me, it's not good. If you write more and more and more, so meaning that you bring a lot of problem. You try to highlight. So in this research, we have problem A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. No. So problem statement, in order to make it a statement, is something that represent is your research problem. So that's why I give some tips. So this, yeah, I know that we we not yet finished in research background, but you need to understand what the problem statement my formula problem statement is very simple. If I have four objectives, okay, let's say I have four objectives. I need to write six paragraph. Six paragraph. My problem statement is six paragraph. How how do I I I, I oh, what we call that the outline for the six paragraph for, for problem statement? First paragraph problem statement is actually introduction of the problem statement. It sounds like okay, I want to write the problem statement. So very short para uh, short paragraph. My first paragraph should be short. So uh, what I try to 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 intro uh, to make it introduction of the problem statement. Okay, like some sound like uh to make it some overview. Dulu, uh, eh? So my second paragraph is actually the problem statement for objective number one. So we we already have objective one, two, three, four. So second paragraph problem statement. This is the problem for the objective number one. Because uh, in, this is a problem statement, but objective is uh, actually objective is actually solution. Solution from the problem statement number one. Um, chap uh, second paragraph is the problem statement for the objective number one. Okay. Uh, paragraph number three is the problem statement for research objective number two. And a uh, fourth paragraph is actually this is a problem statement for objective number three. Fifth paragraph, this is the fourth problem statement for uh, a fifth, uh, sorry, the, the third, sorry, the fourth, for the three research objective. Fifth, the problem statement for uh, fourth uh, research objective. Sixth paragraph, paragraph number six on your problem statement. This is a, the summary of your problem statement. That, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm start. So this is the way I'm suggest to my student if you have four objectives, you need to write six paragraphs your problem statement. So we need to have two, one paragraph for introduction and the last uh, paragraph is your summary. So the two, three, four, five is actually the problem statement for objective number one, two, three, four. That I make arrangement on that. So if you have problem statement, you need to check. For my first problem statement, what the issues? Uh, then you need to check balance on your research background. So all problems should be have issues. So you, you say that this paragraph is your problem statement number one. So where are the issues? You not write any issue in your research background. 
should be you need to know that this issue for purpose for problem statement number one. So this issue, 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 this actually the idea for the problem statement number two. So you cannot be have the problem if you don't have the issue. You have issue, meaning that you can propose the problem statement. If no issue, no problem statement. Because we cannot be write the problem statement without any issues. Right? Okay. Next. Okay. Hanis asked the questions. It mean that we only need to write simple problem statement. But the problem statement need to be taken out from another journal article, right? Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, the Hanis question is, Yes, you just write very simple problem statement. But if you write fact or sentence that is actually fact from somebody, from some research, you still need to have sight. Huh? The simple uh, question from the Hanis is, yes, we can write in the simple one, very clear problem statement, but still you need to have sight. Still have the citation for certain, certain fact that you present in your problem statement. Uh, okay, but depend on the university. My, your question, Hanis, my answer is based because you are studying in UPSI. UPSI, problem statement, need citation. Uh, if you ask me with others university, my previous university, UTM, others university, something like UTM, University Technical Melaka, no need citation in a problem statement. Uh, so, uh, some programs, some university, maybe we have different format and practices. But in our faculty, faculty management and economic problem statement, you need to have citation also to support and prove that this fact from who. Uh, again, okay. Yes. Okay, thank you, Anis, for your, for your uh, questions. Okay. So we conclude the, the research, be research background. Some relevant issues are dominance and influential. And this become the cause and trigger to the development of the problem statement that I already highlight. So this issue, these relevant issues, this is sound like dominant and influence, cause and trigger in order to propose the problem statement. So you cannot write problem statement without any issues. How important issues in order to us to write the problem statement. How, how come we can write the problem statement without any issues? Uh, that, that the conclude, and eh? number one. So research background is, again, it sounds like translate and explain by integrate this sum of relevant issues to it contributing the creation of the problem statement. Okay, and you want to create your problem statement, we need some issues. Okay, relevant or critical issue are integrated and translated or explanation which become the cause and trigger for the development of the problem statement in the thesis. Thesis is something like projection. Okay, we have very good argument and justify why you need to start right in research background first because research background is issue. The next one is a problem. You cannot be write a problem without any issues. After problem statement, research objective. You cannot be proposed any research objective if you don't have the research problem. That, that very nice, the outline for the chapter one. You don't have the objective. How come we can write the research question? If you don't have the research objective and research question, how come we can write definitely operational? All this outline, how can we start the significance of research and scope and limitation? If you want to write the significance of research, scope and limitation, you need to have done your research background, problem statement, your objective, your question, your hypothesis, your definition operation. The last one of the section introduction, then you can be right your significance of research and scope and limitation. We already, yes, formatting already, try to make a sequence to the student. You can follow step by step. Okay, right. So this sounds like uh, this all point is already covered 
from my explanation, but just I just to make a summarize. Some important question have been answered. If you want to do this one as, as a checklist, you have done your research background, so use this slide as your checklist. Yes, we already highlighted some important thing. Some key researcher are contribute prominent author. Yes, from my citation, the citation is from the prominent authors. Okay, some important. Yes, the all this I'm highlight in research background is the relevant issues are important ones. Past research trend, so we can see that the the new setting, the currently what that the previous research done. Okay, some relevant issue are dominant. Yes, all these issue are most important. A uh, bring a dominant and influence. And two, our problem statement. This relevant issue are cause information the problem statement. Yes, and cause trigger information to the uh, creation of the problem statement. Okay. Okay. So this is sounds like uh okay. This part also you need to consider are uh, important also. Okay. So this mostly uh if you are not just I I don't want I don't want my PhD student. And master student, just write in your thesis because you you read that you read the article journal and thesis. Suddenly you write your research background. So as the PhD and master student, your knowledge should be more relevant, more practical towards our industry. So how important researcher towards on the industrial development. Okay, I believe because most of you are practitioner actually. So when we work the industry, the way we we explain, the way we uh present our report eh, to the uh to the top management, we give some fact and justify to reflect to our customer, to reflect to our industry, to show that the impact of the social economic. And how that this also can be good for our company performance. All right. So as the worldwide, all the company and industry talk about the SDG, Sustainable Development Goal. So I hope from your research background, you can write at least in one sentence to show that your topic under SDG, which number? Uh, so this is really important. Eh? So uh, you are actually SDG number one, no poverty. So your topic is SDG number two, zero hunger. Uh, number three, good heart and well-being. Number four, quality education. You are SDG number five, gender equality. Or number six, clean water and sanitation. Or number seven, affordable and clean energy. You are actually number eight. Uh, maybe in FPE, we have a lot of uh, most are suitable is SDG number eight because decent work and economic growth. And right? maybe you are number nine, industry innovation and infrastructure. And uh, number ten, reduce inequalities. Number eleven, sustainable cities and communities. Twelve, responsible consumption and productions. Thirteen, climate action. Fourteen, life below waters. SDG fifteen, life on land. Sixteen, uh, peace, justice, and strong institutions. 17th, partnership for the goal and others and societal harmony and happiness. Okay. You can ask your supervisor. Okay. In academicians, your supervisor, if your supervisor want to write the research proposal to get the research grant, he actually must to answer their topic cover which number SDG. Uh, this is a requirement. If you don't highlight, you don't mention this topic is SDG, what's number, you cannot be submit your proposal. Uh, you cannot be submit your proposal grant without highlight your topic in which area on SDG. So, to, to reflect in this situation or we apply for this situation is actually Postgraduate student also can be highlighted in your research background. You are SDG, which number? Okay, that is very important. This is worldwide. 
whatever you go to America, you go to US, you go to the UK, you go to the Africans, you go to the Arabic countries, you go to the ASEAN uh, countries, you go to the consultant world, you go to industrial world, government agency, everyone talk about SDG. Uh, one of the worldwide general issues. You can be highlight in which paragraph or which sentence you can be include the explanations towards your area or your topic is relate with the SDG, which number lah. You can be maybe number number eight. Uh, eh? Decent work and economic growth. Okay. Not just only in SDG or oh, this one for Malaysia. In Malaysia, we have another one we call that KGA, Key Economic Growth Activities. Okay. Why? So your topic, right, your topic to follow the national agenda. In Malaysia, national agenda. So we are follow the 10 KGA. So your topic, and eh, your topic, because when we talk about this one, it's reflect on your, you should be right in this background, but we are followed from your topic, your titles. So from your topic and title are actually under which number of KGA? KGA 1, Islamic Finance Hub 2.0. KGA number two, digital economy. KGA number three, industry revolution 4.0. KGA number four, content industry. KGA number five, ASEAN hub. KGA number six, Hala and food hub. KGA number seven, community Malaysia. KGA number eight, uh, logistic, transportation and sustainability mobility. KGA number nine, coastal and maritime. 10, center of excellence. 11, renewable energy. A green economy number 12. 13, smart, high-value agriculture. 14, and advanced and modern service. 15, Emanesia Truly Asia. Okay, that this is to show that you are matched. Oh, this is good researcher. You know that how important this topic to our national, our Malaysians. What is actually government hope that your research can be contribute to the government, to the industry in which area? SDG number one. Uh, KGA number one, you can highlight together. Not just only for KGA and SDG, you also can be highlight. This one from Malaysia also. So from student, from international, from China, for example, from, from UAE, for example, if you are study in China, you need to go your, your government's policy, a government's uh, blueprints, uh, and a strategic direction on your government and industry. Okay, but this is some as example that is case from Malaysia. So we have another one we call the MYSTIE, Malaysia Science, Technology, Innovation and Economic. We call the MYSTIE. So your title, your topic in which uh, MYSTIE, one is energy, two business and financial services, three culture, art and tourism, fourth medical healthcare, fifth is actually Smart technology and system and next generation engineering and manufacturing. Okay, six, a smart city and transportation. Seven, water and foods. Eight, agriculture and forestry. Nine, education. Ten, environment, environment and biodiversity. Uh, so this is sound like that, that the difference between researcher in outside there and your uh, study PhD. Uh, you know that what should I write in research background. So I believe some of you also have Maybe you have done, do research in your company. Okay, now you join the PhD and master, you can improve your skill. Also, after, after you finish your study in, in UPSR, then you go back to your industry, you can polish your skill, how to write in a good research because you are understand uh, what thing I should write in research background. So I need to show that this topic is critical, important. Uh, this is not just myself. This issue uh, contribute to the government, contribute to the industry, contribute to the social, contribute to the research or kinemissions. Uh, so how that you need to reflect this important importance government issues in your research backgrounds. Okay. So in Malaysia, we have another thing. Uh -huh. Too many things. Our our direction in Malaysia actually. So in Malaysia, kita ada satu lagi what we call that in Malay, we call that 17 Anjakan Besar Dalam Ekonomi Madani. So, this is a big bowl for the Ekonomi Madani in Malaysia. Number one is the governance and institutional 
Number two is regulation related to corruptions. Number three, because all the 17, eh, a three is fiscal sustainability, ports, HGHV industry based on energy transition. Fifth, a targeted subsidiaries. A sixth, unculturation of Madadi society. A seven, social protection reform. A eight, housing for the rakyat. Nine, strengthening healthcare. Ten, strengthening national security defense. Eleven, digital and technology based HGHV industry. 12, high value E and E HGHV industry. 13, agriculture and agro based industry. 14, rare earth HGV industry. Uh, 15, empowering SME and social enterprise. 16, streamlining the public transport network. 17, future ready talent. Uh, okay, so your topic in which and uh, 17 and big bowl and big shift in the economy manner you need to highlight also. So we have another thing. So we have done cover that this 10, 30 before. Okay. So this one, you should be know that in Malaysia, we have 25 kementerian, a government agency. Eh? We have 25 kementerian. So your topic in which, which kementerian. So which, which kementerian can be, can be beneficial from your study. So we have... Uh, JPM Prime Minister Department. Your 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 topic maybe directly contribute to the Prime Minister Department. Maybe Ministry of Home Affair, uh, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Defence, and uh, KKDW, Ministry of Rural Regional Development, KPT, and Ministry of Higher Education, KPKT for Ministry of Local Government Development, MOT, Ministry of Transport, MAFS, and Ministry of Agriculture and Food Security, KSM, Ministry of Human Resource. KPWKM, uh, Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development. KKM, Ministry of Health. Okay, KBS, Ministry of Youth and Sport. KUSCOP, and Ministry of Entrepreneur and Cooperative Development. KASA, Ministry of Natural Resources, Environment and Climate Change. KPDM, Ministry of Domestic Trade and Cost Living. KLN, Ministry of Forage of Family Malaysia. MPIC, and Ministry of Plantation and Community, Mosti. Uh, Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation Malaysia, MITI, Ministry of Investment, Trade Industry, MOTEC, Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture, KKR, and Ministry of Work, KPN, Ministry of National Unity, KKMM, Ministry of Communication and Digital. So this part of, you should be know that, uh, because you are studying on, you should be know, because this is your topic. So who's the, who's the directly, and uh, can be get, uh, contribute, you can contribute and give the beneficial to directly uh, kementerian or the government agency. So in Malaysia, we have 25 kementerian. Right? So you can be not only one, maybe as the directly, maybe one, maybe in, in the indirectly, maybe you have another kementerian, two or three, maybe. Okay. So this one is just, I show that from this slide, I just, I show the sum, summary. So I put the infographic to conclude what is actually research background. So first thing first, uh, when we read your research background, align to your topic. So we know already your topic and then we read your research background. So all the content from research background is aligned with your title. Okay. Align with the title, this focus and clear. Next, the current agenda. Please not discuss only local from national, but you need to highlight international also. So the SDG is part of international. Uh, if you discuss about Kega, you already discuss the economy Madani. You discuss about RMK, something like that, all the data, uh, all the policies, but you forget to highlight about the international. So the best thing you can highlight for international is SDG. Okay. So the critical value. So we can understand from the recent background, we can see how important this issue, how the critical value this issue uh, to, to, to highlight the priority and needs and attention. So this is a part of the issue can be, can be agreed. The research should be that should be take and done from these issues okay so maybe your 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 issue can be a fundamental and that's why i put the all and fundamental or the potential toward a clear output and potential or contribute so that's why we try to blend so your idea not just only from the academician because academician is based on the article journal and thesis not just only depend on the material from article journal and thesis but to make sure your research background also can be contribute to the industry. So you can you can also cite the annual report. Okay. That's your issue is also contribute to the government 
you need to refer to all the the government's uh, policy, uh, government document, blueprint, and strategic planning, something like that. You need to be, you can be side in your research background. So the last one, uh, that's that's important. Why we need the we why we need to write the research background is something like because this is a relevant issues. So this issue you need to write more detail in literature review because we we just notice when we read your research background we notice so we have issue a issue b issue c issue d issue e issue f to g h i j okay you bring 10 issues so this all 10 issues you need to explain more and more and more and more detail in literature review so that's why in chapter one you just maybe one issue one citation only because you can write more detail that the same issue, let's say issue number one, maybe you have 20 citation in literature review. Okay, uh, so how that important to research background also in, in your chapter two and chapter three. So in order to write chapter two and chapter three, also you depends, we, we also refer your research background to make the alignment between chapter two literature review with research background and methodology and research background. So because from the research background, we can know that what the method can be can be, can be proposed. From your literature review, sorry, from your research background that we know that what the, the article we need to get uh, in order to explain more detail the issues. You uh, this research background is contribute to the literature review and methodology also. Okay. So this sound like I try to show the the graphical idea. Okay, basically we 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 actually start the general issue. This this what we call that the the first month. Okay, once you register as PhD student, so this our our progress. Now we have general issues. Okay, we have many issues, but just only general issues. Then you go to the screening. Okay, that's your notice. So to many issue is not relevant. Okay, after you make a screening, only have uh, eight issues here. Okay, this just example, okay, maybe you have more, but I just show that it's common. We, we, we have many and many issues, we call that general issue, that we have need to screen it because maybe this all issue you sh should be removed because it's not relevant. So the final one, you have eight relevant issues. But it's not still, 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 oh, why we call that the final one. It's not the final decision. So the last one, you need to identify what's the relevant issue do a research. Maybe this is a relevant issue, but some of the this relevant issue are not suitable to continue or to extend as a research. Or this relevant issue can be good input to a research. So, the final one, we only have the four issues, four main issues in order to highlight in your research background. This sounds like idea. Not necessary you follow that's my specific number. Relevant issues is eight and relevant issue do a research only four. I think maybe for the PhD student, not enough for issue for the for the relevant issue on research. Should be have you write more. If you are MBA student, uh, maybe enough. But for the PhD student, you need to highlight many issues. So not enough, only four lah. And okay, so this just some like the graphical idea as the an apa common common nature uh for PhD and master student when we start to write in your research background, we we notice we have a lot of issues, but we need to more realistic. You need to summarize or you need to be selective, which are actually the relevant issues. From the relevant issues, you are already noticed also this relevant issue. But not all the relevant issues are suitable. You write in your thesis because now we do whatever we do is actually for the R&D. Because we write thesis. Thesis actually based on the research. So what thing the issues are most suitable for the research agenda? Okay. Now we go to the problem statement. Uh, so after we done to cover the the research background, now we are looking for the uh, problem statement. Okay, the simple words, the problem 
it's actually you can refer in the corner. Okay, the research problem that can be solved. Uh, eh? Research problem statement that can be solved through integrations and alignment between research input process and output. Another word is we have done research background. Now you have two input. First input you have title. Second input you have research background. So research background and already supply us relevance research issues. So now we have already and some of the relevant issues. What's next? We need to write the problem statement. It's okay because it's easy to us to write the problem statement because we already we already have the relevant issues. Okay. So number one, uh, pro research problem can be solved with the most appropriate research process. Okay. You need to make sure, okay, in this matter, I'm, I'm suggest we need to use SMART. SMART stand for S is specific, M is measurable, A for analyze, R is the realistic, T is timeliness. So problem statement should be specific. Uh, that's number one. Problem statement is specific. Second, problem statement can be measured. Uh, you 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 notice that you you maybe you write this is your problem statement. The question for the examiner how to measure your problem statement. If you cannot be measure your uh measure is something based on research. Measure is research. We can measure by using the research instrument by using the research design. Okay, but if this problem cannot be measured by research. So this is not right problem statement. Okay, let's say yes, we can measure. Automatically, we can analyze. If we can measure, we can analyze. But we check, oh, you highlight general measurement. So you have also blue, how to analyze. Huh? Uh, so you need to have specific measurement, then you can analyze. Okay, you should be realistic. PhD three years, master one and a half or two years. Don't bring something biggest problem cannot be solved during three years. And you should be more realistic and timeliness. Realistic also, you can do as this individual researcher. We are not work from the company right now. Yes, company, we have team. We have also support by others department. Now you are actually individual researcher. You should be realistic and timeliness. Uh, and okay, number number two is the courses are specifically developed. Uh, and you are research objective. Uh, RO is a research objective. Research objective, we need a problem. If you don't bring specific problem statement, how we can be suggest on the research objective? A specific problem that can be solved by represent research objective. This part and seriously check. Uh, objective number one, where your problem statement? Why your problem statement and research objective is not aligned? So problem statement, you highlight A, but you propose objective B. It's not aligned. That the very serious part, the supervisor and examiner will check to make sure that your problem statement and objective is aligned. All the problem have been research objective. No, no more, no less. Meaning that you need to check. All problems should be have objective. No need objective without any problem. You cannot be at problem statement. Sorry, research objective number five, uh, pro objective number six without any problem statement. You cannot be simply at your research objective without problem statement. Uh, that we need to check no more and no less. Okay, um, and then we, we, we already uh, make a two conclusion. We know we already write the problem statement. We can check a line with the issues. So we notice that uh, this issue, uh, this is a problem statement. So you can make it alignment towards research background and problem statement. The second one is you can check the alignment between problem statement and objective. That we call that alignment thing, very important in order to write the problem statement. 
Okay, next is a limitation gap. Okay, this is a very thing that this is actually difficult to explain, but I try to make it I, I try to make it short. Uh, in in research we have a few gap. We call that theoretical gap, methodological and analysis gap, empirical gap. Yes, maybe your topic are same with the previous research. Maybe they refer different theory. Maybe the number of variable are not same. The chosen of the factor or team also not same. That's, that's why we call that we have the theoretical gap. We have many and many methodology. For example, research strategy. We have the case study, action research, grounded theory, phenomenology, ethnography, achievable research, experiments, and survey. So we have a lot of research strategy. So meaning that from one to one researcher from previous study, I use multiple and based on maybe the selection using only one research strategy. Maybe your research use different method. Your sample uh, difference, your unit analysis different, your research design also, you, you, you are extend actually. So your instrument is actually new item or you adapt the item instrument. So you are actually, in, in, in conclude, we can say that we facing a methodological gap. Okay. Also on the finding, maybe the previous one, most of the research, not significant. And maybe from literature and current situation, from your research, maybe your result can be a significance, for example. Okay. So we we, we also uh oh, we call that uh need to consider on the empirical gap also. And again, uh, this one is really important. Uh many comment from uh supervisor and examiner when you write problem statement. Your problem, yeah, yeah, you you have done to write problem statement, but your problem statement is unclear, or or, or maybe not not too strong. Okay? Uh, sounds like hanging, okay? Sound like um, uh, yeah, to be general, it can it can be as a problem statement, but less of the that that I already mentioned less of strength and strong. Argument. Uh, so that's why you need to have justify. Uh, that's why that the Hanis us before we need some citation in problem statement. Yes, to show, to prove, to support. Uh, that's what we call that justify. Why you highlight this problem statement. Why the so important this problem need to be solved? Okay, why this problem statement need do a research? Why this problem can be can be uh good uh in term of a PhD and master and right? because we we need to more measurable analyze realistic and timeliness right right. So this is a uh, the initial uh, problem statement. We I'm I'm trying to start to explain the problem statement through this infographic. Okay, so I try to show you mapping here uh, to make more understanding what is your pro what 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 is actually problem statement. Okay, so I'm trying to I'm trying to divide problem statement by two method first method in quantitative and another method is the qualitative okay uh, a little bit explanation the difference between qualitative methodology and quantitative quality and quantity methodology first is if you want to study certain topic certain topic and the specific area about the knowledge about the current study, we use term phenomena, phenomenon. 
that this phenomena already covered through previous researcher or not yet. If you are qualitative researcher, you study qualitative researcher, that issue, problem, and objective you want to be solved is less or not covered before in the previous study. We still blur. We still not understand why this actually can be happen. Why and why? How to do this? How to improve? How to solve? Meaning that this topic is new topic. We cannot get the answer from the previous literature. Theory, literature have yes to assist us but still yet cannot be help us to give the answer about the issues and problem we already highlight. But quantitative, you not alone because previously have already have a theory. We have many study, not just only in Malaysia and worldwide approve that this study have significant, not significant, and positive or negative, we have, we can, we can show that. Uh, why you need to study again if already study by others country? But we need to confirm. Uh, we need to study in Malaysia because we are different culture, different technology. We have a uh, different political and economic condition and practices. So that's why we need to need to confirm. So that's why in quantitative, when you if you want to propose your research objective, you use a word identify, you use determine, you use examine. Why you use examine, determine, and identify? Because we already know the phenomena already knows. Also literature also there, theory also there. We just need to confirm. That's why hypothesis, we only have two answers that can be represented by hypothesis, which is hypothesis null or hypothesis research. Somehow we call that hypothesis one or alternative. Okay, so we have only accept or reject, only two. So we just need to confirm that we from our specific objective can be testing theory and testing hypothesis. So from the testing theory hypothesis, the answer only have two, accepted or rejected. That the difference between quantitative and qualitative. Qualitative, we don't have information enough. We still not clear, so we don't know. So no previous study have specific study about this topic. So that's why you can know that in quantitative, we only looking for what, when, who, where. What, when, who, where. Very structured. Very structured. But in qualitative, yes, we can still use the what, but the, the critical one is why, why. Because you don't understand why. You ask the question, why, why we need to do this? Why? Why? Still why? 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 After you done to why, so we need to how. In industry, basically we use qualitative. If you not believe why the industry, they have why, why to how. I, might, I work in industry before. So in order to solve the problem, so so we need to, to do the analysis by fishbone diagram and somehow we call it cause and effect diagram. And, uh, to check that the five Y and two how, uh, okay? So there are more to be a deep one uh, in order to be to be solved, okay? So I believe that right now, mostly trend also, a student PhD and master also need to consider to apply mixed method already, okay? So this some another view of the infographic to understand. So uh, here I put the yellow one, so this is your research objective one, research objective two, research objective three, and research objective four. So you need to do some justify. And eh? so objective number one, what the justify? Okay. When we discuss about the problem, 
you need to uh, justify the problem statement number one. You need to justify problem statement number two, number three, and number four. So this is some template. Okay, now we go to the research objective. So this is his research objective. So if you are noticed, we can start uh, to understand the research objective through the Bloom taxonomy. You can you can Google and you, you try to find a books what's meaning the Bloom taxonomy. Bloom, uh, Bloom taxonomy is a sound like hierarchy. Also apply not just only for the education and uh, for the teaching and learning but also for the research also okay so you can see that they have the level we can conclude that we have four level level number one is remembering number number two is understanding level number three is applying number four is combination or, or optional from analyzing evaluating and creating okay for master student okay okay there actually you can use the low and moderate level Okay, but for the PhD student, your main objective should be in the fourth level. And your, uh, your fourth level, okay? Okay, this I, I want to explain a little bit that related to our research uh, objective for PhD and master thesis. Remembering, okay, we have a lot, uh, we had a few uh, uh, keyword or factors, action word there. Okay, that we are familiar to do a research is identified. So that's why for the PhD student specifically, don't use identify for all objective. Let's say eh, your plan, objective number one, identify. Objective number two, identify. Number three, identify. Number four, identify. So the level if your research is low, because the level is you just, your, your level objective is just remembering because you use the identify for all objective. Okay, I can be accept identify. Maybe your objective number one is identify. Maybe your objective number two, you, you already use it as a mean. Okay, number three, maybe use the leveler. You cannot be put all objective using identify. Okay, that's not the right way. Uh, some uh, examiner will we, we ask you why your thesis is low level. Uh, to identify your thesis is high level or low level, we can see from your objective what the word you use. Identify, determine, examine, measure, analyze, investigate, design, explain, explore, develop, validate, discover, ascertain. Okay, that the words is common in, in remembering is the identify. So other word is something like less using. For example, list, find, namely, locate, describe, memory, define. Maybe not many researchers use that action words, but commonly we use identify. Okay, we go to the second level. Okay, understanding. Understanding and making sense out of information. Interpret, summarize, explain, infer, paraphrase, discuss. It's common as a research in order to come up with the objective words. Uh, maybe summarize. It's not summarize, sorry. Explain, sorry. In qualitative research, we can use to explain, uh, to explain. So if you use explain in your objective, you are actually the moderate level because explain is the, uh, the under level of understanding. Uh, it should be higher than remembering, but the second level lah, understanding, explain. So for me, explain, okay. My, for my lah, eh. So let's say your objective is to explain, to explain, to explain, to explain, okay. But some of the lecturer in qualitative, they are also can, they are maybe suggest to improve, cannot be all objective explained. So maybe you need to add one, uh, from four objective, at least one objective have explore. Uh, in qualitative, mostly they use the explore or explain, okay. It's okay. We go to the layer number three, the green one. Use information in a new but similar situation. Eh? Use information in a new applying. That's why they're applying. And but similar but situation. Use diagram, make a chart, draw, apply, solve, calculate. But I think for the FPE student, maybe we not use the applying. Maybe if you are from the quantitative statistic, uh, from the mathematics student, maybe, maybe this this upper this this word are more 
suitable. But for for faculty management and economy, maybe your our objective not use the use diagram, make a chart, no. We not directly, indirectly, yes, but directly, no. Okay, we go to the port level. Okay, port level, we start with analyzing. So analyzing, I think that most of researcher in FPE using analyzing. Because we use explore, we are examine, we are do a compare, categorize, contrast, organize. Uh, basically, examine, uh, explore. So this is very common words lah. But somehow you can also use the categorize, compare and contrast. But see, actually in FE, most of the uh, students are actually under analyzing. It's very good because we are the top top level in terms of the research or the Bloom Taxonomy. Okay, second one is evaluating and to judge, to test, to critic, to defend. So cut here, if you do the experiment or something like that, we using to testing. Uh, to testing, basically the word is to testing is something like evaluating. Okay, if you uh, come up with the model, new model, uh, you want to come up the products, uh, you have some module, you want to come out the guideline, you are actually under very good level. We call that creating. Uh, we call that to, to develop model. It, let's say my, my doctorate and PhD, my objective is to develop model, to validate model. So I actually the highest level under Bloom Taxonomy creating. Uh, design, build, construct, plan, produce, device, invent, itu semua creating. So, some lecturer, like me, I'm very positive to my student, I suggest to my student, at least one objective is creating. And you need use develop or validate, at least from their research objective. That I actually recommend that, uh, to show that this is a PhD level, because your objective using the Asian words of the creating. Okay. So this part of the summary of the research objective, I just highlight whatever this, you need to follow the format. Uh, in UPSI, we have both. We have research, uh, we call that objective general statement, and we have the gender specific. Uh, so one sentence, to present general objective, then you have the specific objective, objective one, objective two, objective three, objective four. Your objective should be aligned. So we have known that we have already have the research uh, hypothesis, sorry, problem statement. So we need, we need to make sure that our objective is aligned with the research uh, problem statement and problem statement should be aligned with the research issue. So, uh, not just only problem statement, we using SMART. In research objective also, we need to make sure our objective are specific, our objective can be measured, our objective can be analyzed, can be realistic and timeliness. Okay, your objective, no negotiation, no excuse. Your objective is accurate and organized. By sequence, you need to make sure by sequence. Because of, after this, and in chapter two, you need to write a literature review based on your objective by sequence. You need to explain literature review for objective one first. After that, you need to write literature review for objective number two. Next, number three and number four. You need to follow the sequence and need to organize. Okay, verb that I highlight that the taxonomy bloom. Okay, we need to use the best condition to represent. Because if you use explore, explain, examine, determine, identify, this also can be represented on your, what is your research methodology? What is your research instrument maybe you need to use? Okay, not just simply, you just put explore. No, explore is basically a most suitable for the qualitative research. Uh, so to explain are also for the qualitative research. If you use explore, meaning that maybe your instrument, you need to have the triangulation, you need to use you need to using instrument maybe two and above. You not just only depend interview. At least you have the interview and document. That's why you, you can use the explore. If you want to use explore, some of book, research methodology books suggest you need to apply for the triangulations. 
So many things that whatever the chosen word in order to use as a mean, determine, identify, investigate, develop, evaluate, will be effect the choosing on the research methodology direction. That's really important. Okay. Okay, next is a uh, research question. Okay, research question is very simple. If objective is the statement, research question is questionable. You should be have the question mark and of your research question. All right. The same like uh, research objective, research question also you need to follow the, the university format. So in UPSI, we have the objective and research question. You need to make sure that your research question, you should be aligned with research objective. Uh, your alignment to need the most critical part. Okay. So another thing is uh, the, the numbers, no issue. Okay. Because of uh, we, 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 the most important thing we have all objectives should be research question. That's the most important. Maybe one objective have two research questions. It's okay. No problem. But the, we are calculate is actually all objective should be the should have be on the research question also. Okay, the the choosing of the 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 sorry the, the your your center it should be question. You should be end of the question mark there. Okay, so you can use the what, why or how as or your statement of the research question. Okay, you need to question words using the what, why and how. Your research question can use which one the most suitable. Maybe you can use what, why, and how. Okay. So next research hypothesis. Okay, this is the last one. Okay, I think enough for today. We we can end our chapter one until research hypothesis. But research hypothesis we need to discuss more detail uh, during the literature review and methodology chapter. Okay. The first thing first is some sounds like uh, hypothesis is testing. Hypothesis testing. Uh, no need for the qualitative research. Qualitative research, no need have hypothesis. Yes, in terms of theoretical, qualitative also have hypothesis. We call that hypothesis generating, but we are not test. So in this case, as a research, research outline, so qualitative, no need hypothesis. This is clear. Yes, if you read the book, you, you can see that Hypothesis generating in the book qualitative or research, but in terms of writing, uh, academic writing in your thesis, you no need to write hypothesis in your thesis. Uh, the specific one hypothesis is actually for the quantitative uh, researcher uh, to test the hypothesis to support the testing of the theory. And again, your hypothesis should be aligned with the objective, uh, qu uh, research question, research objective, problem statement, and issue. So hypothesis, we, when we can be categorized, is actually open and close. Uh, so we have the hypothesis, open hypothesis and the closed hypothesis, which is, it sounds like if you're, you already know about this one, we call the hypothesis closed category. If something like new, we call that open hypothesis. So in, in type also hypothesis, we have two. We have H0 and H1. All the statement from the literature is become your research Hypothesis alternative or H1. And the, the contrast of the literature is actually hypothesis null. Okay. So this hypothesis is really important for the quantitative research. You need to have specific. If you have 20 hypotheses, every single hypothesis should be support from literature. So the, the examiner will ask you where the literature review for hypothesis 1. Where the explanation, previous study, empirical research for hypothesis 2. Meaning that you need to have specific literature for, for every single hypothesis of your have proposed in your research. Okay. I think, I think that's enough. Okay. Uh, to, to, to explain today about what is the research background, uh, problem statement, objective of, ob a research question and hypothesis. So uh, maybe we, we continue the next outline chapter one by next week. Okay. So we can wrap up for the next week to complete what is a chapter one that we following week we can discuss about literature review. Why we need two, two weeks 
to cover the introduction. It's not easy to write in chapter one. Maybe looking like you can write chapter one only five page to ten page only, but how to write? So my explanation maybe take time to explain every single section in introduction, but this one is important to you understand. Okay, chapter one is actually uh if you are IT we call that motherboard. Ha, uh, and that that. Kalau in Malay kita kata ibu lah. Nadi. It sounds like if you not clear for chapter 1, how come you can write in chapter 2, 3, 4, 5? And as a beginner, the most critical chapter is chapter 1. Uh, so that's why we take time to learn and understand about the chapter 1. Okay. Uh, any any question you want to ask about the any 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 single section if you want to ask the about introduction, research background. Uh, problem statement, objective, question, and hypothesis, you can ask. Okay. Okay, very... Uh... Tak ada lagi soalan, ya? Eh? Okay, ada soalan. Uh... Can I know who should decide either we can do our research in qualitative or quantitative since I decide do many in quality or is based on my research topic? Anis, uh, as a researcher, let's say I'm the researcher, when I read your research background and problem statement, I know that you are quantity or quality. Uh, that the chosen of words in your research, especially your problem statement, support by research background, we know that you are actually quantity or quality. Whatever decision made, you are using a quality and quantity is based on your research background and your problem statement. Uh, somehow, student, they, they think about, I want to study in quantitative, but your problem statement is not quanti. That you need to learn. Uh, that you need to learn. You need to know that how to write sentence sounds like quantitative, sounds like qualitative. Which words, for example, I plan for quantitative. I try to avoid statement that very clear, if I put this statement, this is qualitative research. I want to make it very short and clear. When people read my issues and problem statement, they are noticed that this is an experiment. Okay, mostly in, in my case, when I read, this is a case study. From your problem statement, this is actual research. No, uh, doctor, I, I'm not. I'm not to explore the actual research or case study. I just want you to survey and using the questionnaire. You are totally wrong. The, your problem statement is not for quantitative research. Do the do the survey or experiment. Very clear your problem statement. It sounds like we are not know the situation. It's something new. Okay, this is the real problem. If you highlight the real problem, which is this is actual research. If you highlight this a unique, unique problems, this is a case study. If you want to highlight is something a total new, you should be using the grounded theory. If you like, you show that inconsistent significant result, then you can use a survey. If you want to testing about what we call the effectiveness, if you want to know about the effectiveness, you need to do the experiment. Uh, that part, Anis. Uh, the, the, from the equation, very simple. How to decide? Yes, lah. During the viva, during the proposal defense, the panel will be decided. For, but in the first step, how to know that which method you should be used from your research background and problem statement. Especially problem statement. And problem statement, this is your problem. And that's why I already mentioned that a problem statement should be smart. Problem should be specific. Problem need to measure. That's part. Your problem can be measured, analyzed, which method. And from... M A smart M N A especially. This is your problem. Specific, yes. My problem statement is specific. My problem statement can be measure analyzed. Ah, measure analyzed which method? From your problem statement, we can identify. Uh, okay. Thank you, Anis, uh, for your for your question. And uh, so others, you have any question? Okay, because we are actually... No, no doctor. Section. Okay, because we are actually the online section, so uh, quite, quite, quite hard we are need to cover on the street three hours. It's commonly 
from the previous semester only maybe one and half or two hours i think just enough to cover on the online section uh, but if you want to get more you if you want to ask anything you can ask in an our whatsapp group you can ask in whatsapp group maybe i will be share some of book i will be share some of extra video i i can be share the, the additional slide to you to 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 understand about what the research methodology i hope so uh, everyone can get some very good information today to make it clear what's the research introduction especially on the introduction research background problem statement objective question and hypothesis so we continue for and for for next section uh what else definition operation uh significant of study scope and limitation for the next week maybe uh, next week if we have time we, we we can start for the literature review a little bit also for the next week okay thank you very much everyone thank you your participation engagement from this class i hope that uh, we, we 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 both get some 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 benefit today and and anything please uh, as a student, don't don't shy to to ask the question. I hope that our group WhatsApp, group WhatsApp, uh, BRM can be activated. Uh, everyone can be share. Everyone can be give comment and feedback to to get some 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 good information, especially on the research methodology. Thank you, everyone. Assalamualaikum and selamat sejahtera and good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Sorry, Miko nak tanya jap. Data hari ni ada share uh, yang kelas link hari ni tak? Hari ni punya. Hari ni sama macam slide yang itu. Sambung kan? Uh, kiranya ada share ke yang link yang link hari ni recording? Tak recording belum recording belum lagi lah sebab baru-baru belum stop recording lagi. Nanti lepas habis recording nanti saya bagi. Okay. Yang last week je saya bagi. Yang last week saya dah bagi. Yang this okay. week nanti biasanya take one to two hours to, to finish the recording. Okay, okay. Sebab, sebab the first day uh, yang first uh, recording tu dia macam satu slide je dia tak 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 ada slide lain-lain. Ah, sebab tak ada untuk yang first video tu memang ada four slide je. Okay, hari ni punya ada banyak-banyak lah. Yang tadi ah. Dr. Shoe punya picture-picture tu semua ada lah kan? Ada, ada, ada. Okay, thank you doctor. Thank you. Bye-bye.